Have you ever wished you had superpowers? Maybe x-ray vision to see through walls or super hearing to listen to whispers from across a room? Well, guess what? Humans have already invented incredible tools that give us kinds of superpowers. Our eyes are amazing, but they can only see a tiny slice of what's really out there. We can't see through thick fog, deep into the ocean, or spot an airplane miles away in a cloudy sky. This is where science comes to the rescue. We are curious creatures, always wanting to explore, to understand, and to keep ourselves safe. That curiosity has driven us to build amazing technologies that let us see in ways our natural senses never could. These technologies are called radar and sonar. Think of them as our extended senses. They are like a bat's echolocation or a dolphin's clicking, but built by engineers and scientists. Instead of using just light to see, they use invisible waves, radio waves for radar and sound waves for sonar. These tools allow us to map the hidden world around us, from the bottom of the deepest ocean trench to the highest reaches of our atmosphere. They help pilots land planes safely in storms, help sailors navigate through dark waters, and even help doctors see inside the human body. It's all about extending our perception beyond the limits of our biology. So how do they do it? It all comes down to a simple yet brilliant idea, sending out a signal and listening for the echo. Imagine you're in a big empty gym. If you shout hello, you'll hear your voice bounce off the far wall and come back to you. By timing how long it takes for that echo to return, you could figure out how far away the wall is. Radar and sonar work on this very same principle, which we call echolocation. They just use different kinds of shouts and are much, much better at listening for the echoes than our ears are. It's a beautifully simple concept that has unlocked a universe of possibilities. This ability to see beyond our sight is not just cool, it's incredibly important. It helps us predict dangerous weather like hurricanes and tornadoes, giving people time to get to safety. It allows us to find valuable resources hidden beneath the earth and sea. It helps us understand animal migration patterns and protect endangered species. By inventing these tools, we haven't just built machines. We have given ourselves a new way to interact with our world, to explore its mysteries, and to protect our home. So let's dive in and explore how these amazing wave-based technologies work. Consider this, science is giving us the superpowers we've always dreamed of. To understand radar and sonar, we first need to talk about waves. Now you might think of waves at the beach, and that's a great place to start. But waves are everywhere, carrying energy from one place to another. Some you can see, like light waves, some you can hear, like sound waves, and some are totally invisible, like the radio waves that bring music to your car, or the microwaves that heat up your popcorn. All waves, no matter what kind, share some basic properties. They are the building blocks, the secret language that radar and sonar use to communicate with the world around them. It's a universal principle of physics, and it is awesome. Let's break it down. Every wave has a wavelength, which is the distance from the top of one wave, its crest, to the top of the next. Think of it like the distance between ripples in a pond. Waves also have a frequency, which is how many waves pass by a certain point every second. A high-frequency wave is like shaking a rope up and down really, really fast, creating lots of little choppy waves. A low-frequency wave is like a slow, lazy shake, creating long, rolling waves. These two things, wavelength and frequency, are connected. When the wavelength is long, the frequency is low, and when the wavelength is short, the frequency is high. Then there's amplitude. The amplitude is the height of the wave, from its resting middle point to its highest peak. In a water wave, a bigger amplitude means a taller, more powerful wave. In a sound wave, a bigger amplitude means a louder sound. It's all about the energy. A high amplitude wave is carrying a lot more energy than a low amplitude one. Finally, all waves travel at a certain speed. The speed of light waves in a vacuum is the fastest thing in the universe. The speed of sound waves is much slower, which is why you see lightning before you hear the thunder during a storm. Understanding these simple parts, wavelength, frequency, amplitude, and speed, is the key to unlocking how radar and sonar work so effectively. Scientists and engineers can carefully choose the properties of the waves they send out to get the best possible picture of the world. They can use high-frequency waves to get a very detailed image of something up close, or they can use low-frequency waves that can travel a very long way. It's like choosing the right tool for the job. By mastering this language of waves, we can ask questions about the invisible world and get clear answers back. Now let's talk about radar. The name itself is a clue to how it works. 
radio detection and ranging. Radar works by sending out a powerful focused beam of radio waves from a transmitter. These waves are a type of electromagnetic radiation, just like light or X-rays, but with a much longer wavelength, making them invisible to our eyes. These radio waves travel through the air at the speed of light. When they hit an object, like an airplane, a flock of birds, or even tiny raindrops in a cloud, a small part of that energy bounces off the object and reflects back. An echo but made of radio waves. A special receiver, usually located right next to the transmitter, listens for these faint echoes. Because we know exactly how fast radio waves travel, the speed of light, the radar system can calculate the distance to the object by measuring the tiny amount of time it takes for the echo to return. It's like a super fast stopwatch. By doing this, thousands of times per second and pointing its beam in different directions, the radar system can build a complete, real-time map of everything in its range. The information is then displayed on a screen, showing dots or shapes that represent the objects it has detected. The history of radar is fascinating and tied directly to keeping people safe. Its development accelerated during World War II, where it was a top-secret technology used to detect enemy aircraft and ships from far away, giving a crucial early warning. Scientists like Robert Watson Watt were pioneers in this field, turning a scientific concept into a life-saving tool. After the war, this superpower was shared with the world. It was adapted for peaceful uses, completely changing air travel. Today, air traffic controllers use radar to guide thousands of planes safely through crowded skies every single day, tracking their position, altitude, and speed. But radar's job doesn't stop with airplanes. It's one of our most important tools for weather forecasting. A special type of radar called Doppler radar can not only detect raindrops, but can also tell us which way they are moving and how fast. This is how meteorologists can see the rotation inside a storm cloud that might signal a tornado is forming or track the path and intensity of a hurricane as it approaches land. From helping police catch speeding cars to helping astronomers map the surfaces of other planets, radar is our all-seeing eye in the sky constantly working to make our world more predictable and secure. Now let's dive deep, literally, into the world of sonar. Just like radar, the name tells us what it does, sound navigation and ranging. While radar uses radio waves to see through the air, sonar uses sound waves to see through water. Why the switch? Well, radio waves don't travel well through water at all. They get absorbed very quickly. But sound waves travel through water wonderfully, even better and farther than they do through air. So if you want to map the dark, mysterious world beneath the waves, you need to use your ears instead of your eyes, and that's exactly what sonar does. The process is very similar to radar. A sonar device, called a transducer, sends out a pulse of sound, often a high-frequency ping or chirp that is beyond the range of human hearing. This sound wave travels through the water until it hits something, like the seafloor, a submarine, a shipwreck, or a school of fish. When the sound wave hits the object, it bounces off, creating an echo. The same transducer then switches to listening mode and detects the returning echo. By measuring the time it took for the ping to go out and the echo to come back, the sonar system calculates the distance to the object. The idea for sonar was inspired by nature, particularly by bats and dolphins, but its development was spurred by a human tragedy, the sinking of the Titanic in 1912. After that disaster, inventors were desperate to find a way to detect icebergs. Scientists like Paul Langevin pioneered the use of sound waves, and the technology was further developed during World War I to detect enemy submarines. This underwater listening device became a critical tool for naval warfare, allowing ships to find submarines that were trying to hide in the vastness of the ocean. It was the beginning of our ability to truly explore the underwater realm. Today, sonar is essential for countless underwater tasks. Fishing boats use it to locate large schools of fish, making their work more efficient. Scientists use sophisticated sonar systems to create incredibly detailed three-dimensional maps of the ocean floor, discovering underwater volcanoes, deep canyons, and strange geological formations we never knew existed. Marine biologists use it to track the movements of whales and other sea creatures. And of course, submarines still rely on sonar as their primary way of seeing and navigating the deep, dark ocean, avoiding obstacles and completing their missions safely. Sonar is our window into the largest and least explored part of our planet. So we have two amazing technologies, radar and sonar, that both use the same brilliant echo principle. 
but they are designed for completely different worlds. Think of them as two superheroes, each with a power perfectly suited for their environment. The biggest and most important difference between them is the type of wave they use. Radar is the master of the air and space, using electromagnetic radio waves. Sonar is the champion of the water, using mechanical sound waves. You wouldn't ask a fish to climb a tree, and you wouldn't ask a monkey to breathe underwater. In the same way, you use radar for the sky and sonar for the sea. This fundamental difference in wave type leads to other major distinctions. The most obvious one is speed. Radar's radio waves travel at the speed of light, which is about 300 million meters per second. This is incredibly fast, allowing radar to get near instantaneous information about objects that are very far away, like a storm system hundreds of miles out. Sonar's sound waves, on the other hand, travel much more slowly through water, at about 1,500 meters per second. This is still very fast compared to us, but it's a snail's pace compared to radar. This means sonar is best suited for exploring more localized areas, like the seafloor directly beneath a ship. The environment, or medium, that each wave travels through is the whole reason for this difference. Air is relatively empty, so wispy radio waves can zip through it for hundreds of miles with little interference. Water, however, is much denser than air. It's about 800 times denser. This density stops radio waves in their tracks but provides a perfect pathway for sound waves to travel through. The pressure of the sound wave can move easily from one water molecule to the next, carrying its signal over long distances underwater. It's a perfect example of how scientists have to match the tool to the physical properties of the environment they want to explore. So, while they are cousins in concept, they are specialists in practice. Radar gives us the big picture of the atmosphere, tracking planes, storms, and even satellites. Sonar gives us a detailed close-up view of the hidden underwater world, mapping seabeds, finding shipwrecks, and tracking marine life. One paints a picture of the sky with invisible light, while the other listens to the echoes from the deep. Both are essential, and by understanding their unique strengths and weaknesses, we can use them together to get a more complete and incredible view of our planet, from the highest clouds to the deepest ocean trenches. The story of radar and sonar is far from over. These technologies are constantly evolving, getting smarter, smaller, and more powerful every year. Scientists and engineers are pushing the limits of what's possible, finding new ways to use waves to explore and protect our world. One of the most exciting frontiers is making these systems more intelligent. By combining them with artificial intelligence, or AI, future radar and sonar systems won't just show us dots on a screen. They will be able to instantly identify what they are seeing, whether it's a specific type of aircraft, a particular species of whale, or the early signs of a dangerous geological shift on the seafloor. Think about the possibilities for our planet. Advanced sonar systems could create living maps of our oceans, monitoring the health of coral reefs in real time, or tracking the flow of plastic pollution. This could give us the information we need to protect our fragile marine ecosystems better than ever before. In the sky, next-generation radar could be part of a network that manages fleets of self-driving cars and delivery drones, ensuring they navigate our cities safely and efficiently. These systems will need to be incredibly fast and precise, creating a seamless web of detection that keeps everything moving smoothly and without collision. Of course, there are still challenges to overcome. For sonar, one concern is the impact of loud sound pulses on marine animals like whales and dolphins, which use their own natural sonar to communicate and navigate. Future sonar technology will likely focus on using quieter, more complex signals that are less disruptive to ocean life. For radar, the challenge is dealing with an increasingly crowded sky and finding ways to avoid interference between different systems. Miniaturization is also a huge goal, making radar and sonar sensors so small and energy efficient that they can be put on almost anything, from a tiny environmental monitoring drone to a piece of smart clothing. From their beginnings in times of conflict, radar and sonar have grown into some of the most beneficial scientific tools humanity has ever created. They are our eyes and ears in places we can never go ourselves, silently working to keep us safe, helping us understand our planet, and pushing the boundaries of exploration. The next time you see a weather report showing an incoming storm or watch a documentary about the deep ocean, remember the invisible waves of radar and sonar. They are the unsung heroes of discovery, and their future is as vast and full of potential as the skies and seas they explore. The adventure is just getting started.